Yo, what's going on, everybody? Let's see. I already see a couple people jumping in here already. I got Chad of Chad's Money Minutes. I got Matt Clausen already in the building. Appreciate you guys always showing up early. I actually am ridiculously excited for today's live stream um, because, well, you guys saw the thumbnail. You see the title. We have John Franklin of The Amazing Grace, season 35, here in the building with us today. I'm going to bring him in in a second, but it's crazy to think of the fact that we all, in the reality that we live in, go out of our way to get points, miles, in whatever way we can from credit cards so that we could travel the world for free. And this dude literally just won a million dollars with his brother in reality on a reality TV show doing this exact same thing. So I'm pretty sure at least all of us are familiar with The Amazing Race. So uh, like I said, I'm not gonna take too much time or anything like that today. I'm gonna keep letting a couple more people filter in. I see Mr. Cesar Joel here in the building with us as well. Thank you so much. Cesar has helped me test all this equipment out over the last couple of weeks just to make sure all the audios and visuals are okay. And ironically enough, still had an issue, but show must go on. Um, but Mr. Chad is in the building. So I want to give a special thanks to all my channel members first. And the most recent channel member is Chad himself. And then of course, last but not least, before we jump right into it, don't forget to hit that like button on the way in. I'm almost to my next subscriber goal already. So if you have not hit that subscribe button, please do. And that's all I'm going to say there because I cannot wait to get this interview started. So Mr. John Franklin, Welcome in, oh. winner exactly. of Amazing Grace season 35. Dude, I we're going to get to Amazing Grace questions. We are 100% going to get there. Don't worry. But please, real quick, take a moment, introduce yourself, say what you want to say. Like I said, this is a community of travel enthusiasts as well. So we're definitely going to ask a couple of those questions. But we do it through credit card travel and rewards. So please introduce yourself and then we could hop in and get started. For sure, thank you so much for having me. Uh, for those who don't know me, yeah, my name's John. I am most recently the winner of the CBS reality TV show, The Amazing Race. Uh, I'm a Chicago native, I'm a city boy, but I live in the Bay now, working in tech, and just had the yeah adventure of a lifetime with my brother doing this show, and really honored to just like share my experience and get people excited to travel, because the show is like a great advertisement for travel as a whole. I couldn't have said it better myself. And I also love that you brought up Chicago because I'm an Illinois boy myself. Hey, there you go. I wasn't born in Chicago. My mom was, but I did spend a lot of my time living in Chicago. So I'm South Side, South Loop. My driver's yeah. license was South not Loop. from. Yeah, State and Life. <laughs> yeah. Um, State and Roosevelt for me, actually, right at the. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The corner of where the Jewel Osco is, Walgreens. Yep. Yeah. Red, orange, and green line all on the same corner. Uh -huh. Yep. That's yeah. exactly where I lived. Yep. Wow. For sure. Oh, small world. Big world, small world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, always got to love the Chicagoans. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's just go ahead and get started. For Icebreaker, I did some rapid fire questions. So let's just break the ice, kind of get into it. I got to grab my other phones because I got one, only one screen right now, but let's go ahead and get started. First one, what's your favorite country? Favorite country? Oh, Japan. It's so well-rounded. I, I love the U.S. too, but Japan is my answer for now. Oh, I'm coming back to that. Most visited country? Most visited France. I'm not proud of it, but for some reason, <laughs> France is really, yeah, tacked up in the numbers. I don't know how. Favorite place to visit? Hawaii. Hawaii. Spent some time there over COVID and my heart's still there, TBH. You know what? I got to kind of agree with Hawaii. Got to kind of agree with Hawaii. Um, but that actually eliminates my next question was, what's the favorite place to visit in the U.S.? So I'll give you a second answer. I'm from <laughs> New Orleans. <laughs> okay, I'll go to New Orleans anytime. I'm such a yes man for New Orleans. It's funny that you say that because we're actually having a creator meetup later this year, Labor Day weekend, and it's in New Orleans. I can't tell you the last time I was there. So I'm actually really interested to go back. Um, haven't booked my trips yet. I know the community's probably dropping comments right now, like, Lonnie, book your trip. New Orleans. <laughs> Got it. Uh, yeah. 
Total number of continents visited. Continents, we're at six. Uh, of course, like Antarctica, elusive, still hanging. But at some point, I'll do like a chilly Antarctica combo trip at some point. I was actually going to ask if it, because nowadays Antarctica is not the like sub answer. Like a lot of people actually go there now. Like they take cruise yeah. ships to Antarctica. So it could have been mm -hmm. somewhere else, but no, oh, didn't want to assume. Yeah. All right, here we go. Here's some fun ones. Window seat or aisle seat? Window. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Where are you going to put your head if you're in the aisle? My bladder is pretty good, too. So, yeah. Economy or business class? <sighs> business class. Yeah. No, no argument there. Carry on or check bag? Carry on. Fight for a carry on as much as you can until, like, there's just, you, that zipper just won't work. Then you go, then you go check. What is your must-have travel item? A sleep mask. That thing is an off switch for me. You put that on, I'm clocked out until I take it back off. So cab, airplane, train. Yeah. All right, unprompted. The amenity keep sleep mask, or you get your, or you bring your own sleep mask? I bring my own. I bring okay. my own. Yeah, <laughs> carry it everywhere. Yep. Uh, what's the weirdest thing that you travel with? I carry a screwdriver with me for whatever reason. Like it's like a small portable screwdriver with a, a few different heads. I've used it maybe once or twice, but those once or twice they've been critical. I cannot think of a single time I ever needed a screwdriver travel. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, uh, last three. Hotel status. Does it matter? Yes or no? Yes. Depending on your job and where you live. But for me, yes, it matters. Airline status, does it matter, yes or no? Same thing. Like, at least an alliance of some sort. Choose some some alliance. I'll 100% I'll give you that, as long as it's alliance status, yes. And lounge access, does it matter, yes or no? Uh, <laughs> I'll put that as a preference. I've been very yes or no on these, but I'll put that as people's preference, depending on when you get to the airport. I say yes for me. Uh, but you just got to get that credit card. And you know, you're good with priority pass. Yep. All right. I'm not judging. I'm not, I know these are like hot takes. I see the comments like starting to pour in a little bit. So I'm pretty sure people are like responding to you at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I'll up. yeah. So let's start hopping into some questions because uh, the first thing is, is that be, even before the show, you were a avid travel enthusiast, travel hobbyist, so you just like to travel in the first place. So my first question, just to kind of get started, is, you know, how did travel become part of your life? Yeah, I'd say I traveled domestically when I was younger with my family a ton. I guess it goes back to my mom, who's my grandfather, took my mom around the country, all like 48 continental states when she was younger. So she really got that bug to take us around the U.S. And when I hit college... I actually ended up doing some hackathons. So I studied engineering and would travel and usually travel for free to work for 24, 48 hours on a coding project and get you know free food, companies would sponsor it, and you get to travel to different countries, usually universities. And even from freshman year, I was like, oh wow, this is really doable if I can like have these routes to get me to places and then just make these day trips. So I definitely got into super scrappy travel when I was an undergrad. Uh, like I'd go, I'm the one who'd go to LA and take buses, like buses everywhere. I wouldn't, would not rent a car because I'm also under 25. And yeah, once I graduated college, um, I was able to travel for work and just continued to uh, use my New York airport hub uh, benefits to be able to go everywhere I can. And then even got to do a study, like not a study abroad, but work abroad in undergrad to work in London uh, for Google. And from there, you know, visited as many European countries as I can. I just kept the ball rolling since then. Do that. One, I resonate very well with that story. Um, and two, no, that's awesome. Now, I never personally got to like work abroad, travel abroad, yes, but work abroad, no. Um, but of course, being familiar with Europe, I totally resonate as well with, hey, if you're in London, just hop on a train, hop on a small commuter jet to the next country over, two countries over. Europe's yep. so convenient to get around. I think that's one of the things like from a travel standpoint, people highly overlook, like they'll go to Europe and then they'll make a round trip, come back. It's like, no, you 
Do you realize you could have went to like three different countries in a week? Hell yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I remember the cheapest plane ticket I ever got was a Ryanair ticket for 12 pounds. Oh, Ryan. Ryan. Oh, no, man. not Ryan. <laughs> 20 year old me was like i'm happy with whatever flies i'll, I'll take it i i actually can't be mad i've flown spirit once so i'll give you ryan oh <laughs> uh, with that said what's your out of all this travel that you've had in the background of traveling that you had what's the favorite thing or that what's the one thing that brings you the most joy or you get out of traveling i i, I think this is true for a lot of things that i enjoy not just travel but my other hobbies is just being able to connect with other people based on places that resonate with them. So it's really great when I'm able to yeah, visit New Orleans and talk to someone who's from New Orleans and be able to uh, know like what, you know, their their family might be like or what like food that they had or, or cultural values that they have. And that's very much true abroad. And um, I think I can see uh, some light in people's faces when I say, yeah, I was, I've been, I've actually been to your hometown in India and like be able to uh, just connect with people in that way. And then, of course, when I'm on the ground in those countries, being able to just learn and absorb. Because there's only so much world. Like, there's a finite amount of world. And it's kind of crazy that yep. you're able to yep. unlock these places and visit and and, and just, like, continue to, um, yeah, just continue to, like, uncover your own knowledge on, on a very eclectic earth. I couldn't have said that better myself, to be, to be completely honest. Yep. Cool, cool. It was word vomit. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad it went over. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't even have a rebuttal for that. There's nothing to add to that answer right there. I'm not even gonna lie. Oh, um, so with all the travel that you do, of course, like you had mentioned, you have been multiple places, multiple countries. You've seen multiple types of cultures, experienced multiple types of cultures. This eclectic world, as you had mentioned it. What is your preferred? vacation style then are you one that's like put me on a beach take me to a museum i'm a foodie culture type of person as you had mm -hmm. mentioned earlier with japan um actually i left it right here off of my desk there's some ramen right there i love yeah. tonkatsu ramen it's one of my favorite dishes right there um what's your vacation style or what's your preferred vacation style yeah, it's, you know what, I'll tell you, it's it's been changed throughout the years, Lonnie, I'm telling you. It's like, I, I think as I have been exiting my college time, which was very city-focused and museum-focused, I think I really get a lot out of not seeing just a current snapshot, but like seeing, yeah, art, seeing history in, in the place where it happens has always been a portion of it. But I think I'm really starting to, yeah, to see the value of, um, yeah, of like different nature spots. Like, I think... I, there are just like a lot of really unique uh, geological features that, again, similarly, like you're just not going to find in the U.S. as big as the U.S. is. So I, I think I've been trying to do more of that, especially around South America. And I was just in Africa for three and a half weeks as of two weeks ago. Uh, and just like seeing, you know, falls, deserts, animals, wildlife that I, I typically wouldn't see. And it's relaxing. Cities aren't always relaxing, but they can be. Yeah, correct. Cities are not always relaxing. But I think you touched on one thing. Um, the history. So if I'm ever in a place where a large historic moment happened, I always like have a different feeling of like standing where that history took place. Um, I can only imagine like how many different places you've gone where you've had that exact same type of feeling. The one that really pops, one because I'm, I'm a musician at heart as well, going to Detroit, standing on the steps of Hitsville, USA, like to my like, parents were literally there five days ago. So I, can <laughs> send, I can show you the photo. It's real steps. Absolutely. Yeah. It had that same feeling. So it's definitely something that we really all share when, you, when you're Yeah, it's like Smokey Robinson walked up these steps. Michael Jackson walked up these steps. Temptations, Marvin Gaye. Like, just being able to stand and, and walk up those steps kind of just put that history moment just put so many chills in, in, into me as well. But of mm -hmm. course, there's other lots of other places around the world where you can have that same moment. But I think that was like my top one because I am such a Barry Gordy fan. Hitsville, Motown. Yeah. I will go off on a tangent and I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Your YouTube channel. <laughs> right, right. Wrong, wrong, uh, wrong topic for the channel. Absolutely. Oh, uh, now, as I had mentioned, I myself also grew up in a traveling family very similar to you. Um, 
like I said, my parents grew up, at, my mom's from South Central Chicago. My dad's from Capitol Heights, Maryland, uh, well, basically DC. He's on the DC side of the mm -hmm. Mar Capitol Heights, Maryland district. So they grew up in these neighborhoods and around an environment where travel was not, and still not quite available to the people that live in those types of neighborhoods. So they found it very important to take us around lots of places. Now, very similar to you, we always had a family vacation. Once mm -hmm. I'm the youngest in my family, so I'm, I have three older siblings and of course my parents, so our direct family of six. So I'm the youngest. So by the time I got old enough and parents stopped paying for it, and it's like, yo, we're here's our family vacation. Everyone needs to pony up. Mm -hmm. I also at that same time, kind of very similar to you, had a different job. I was working in the music industry and I learned the benefits of travel rewards, like just having frequent flyer miles, things like that. And then I, that resonated and transformed into getting into credit card travel rewards, points, miles, things like that, which is how I now travel with me and my family around the world. Now, with that, all context to say, um, there's a lot of different tools, resources, hacks mm -hmm. to get from point A to point B and whatever your destination is. So what is the best travel hack, tool, resource, or advice that you could offer us in this community um, about your travel experiences? Yeah, I think a lot of my travel experience, at least hacks and Gamify does circle around flights a good amount. I think um, when it comes to stays, there are just so many different routes, depending on what you're saying, whether it's booking.com, whether you go Airbnb, whether you um, ask like people who live there, like just like what's going on. Um, home exchange is something my brother and I do that's been really helpful. So all that's really big in the, uh, the, the housing part. But for flying, I mean, I'm big with Google Flights. That's my go-to. But I definitely dabbled in skip lag, and that saved me thousands over the years, thousands over the years. So um, it for um, maybe the audience knows, but yeah, for skip flag, it helps you with those flights that aren't all in the same itinerary or same airline, not even the same airport. And so it'll allow you to buy flights that get you from point A to point B, but the itinerary might not actually be point A to point B, especially if it's cheaper to get to a farther location with a connecting, a connection in the city you want to actually end in. And so you get to the connecting you dip, you don't get on the next flight. It's not really kosher with airlines. It's kind of frowned upon, but um, I've had a few flights from like Australia. They're supposed to go Australia to San Francisco to Hawaii. And it's like $800 cheaper than the S Australia to SF. And, you know, <laughs> sorry, United, I, I got a little sick. I, I can't make that Hawaii flight. It's happening. Um, I don't advise it, but it's been helpful for me. Look, I, I have two rules in life. And it is either don't do it or don't get caught. So hmm. to all those out there listening, as he had mentioned, disclaimer, either don't do it or don't get caught. <laughs> and, we'll just, and we'll just leave that one right there. Now, I've heard of skip lag. I personally have never done it. So I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm not gonna say I'm in the don't do it crowd, but I'm in the I haven't done it crowd. I've mm -hmm. actually I, I'm fully aware of like as as you had said, like get a connect on flight and just don't take that second flight. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, like, are, well, I'm trying to say it without being rude to the airlines because some of them might actually be watching this channel. <laughs> some of them actually might be tuning in, but is this, some, how often do you do that? Or is there any other ways that you do it? Now, the reason why I say that is because like in my world, it's about travel rewards since cent per point, cent per mile, yeah. or anything like that. So if you had travel rewards or you have A, your travel rewards, column B, just book directly with the airline, or three, like skip lag, yep. which one is more important to you? The cost, the route itself, the, tra the, the transportation, like maybe you have to fly two different airlines and connect. I, kn I know, especially with international, go get your bag, go back into the airport to check into the other flight, those types of things. So mm -hmm. what is that preferred style for you? Or like, how would you prioritize that? Is it more value focused? Is it more easeability focused? Is it more ease of travel focus? Yeah, I think I'm someone who loves a good deal. And so I think I get excited when I can see, oh, I can get this scheme going. 
And especially when it's, I think, 500 plus dollars, it's usually international when I do the skip bag. When it's, in, when it's domestic, I get yeah. I'll start prioritizing those, those miles or yeah, ultimate rewards points. I'll try to use those as much as I can and then fall into just like buying directly with the airline and, and racking up miles that way. But I think when I'm going internationally, I'll look at the skip lag. The, the scary thing is sometimes, usually I do it with the carriers I like value most. And it's it's a little dicey because the the stick with it is that they can take your you know status away frequent flyers. So um, yep. I think that's the, the hardest part. But I it's very much like, yeah, it, it's very much when it's a, it's a larger benefit. Usually I'm just looking to see if there are any routes that are different airlines because even though Google Flights is good with like the separate airlines, Skip Lag will yep. do well with different airports. And so if it wants me to fly into Haneda, but then I've got to take a train to Narta and then go from there and it's, you know, great time, cheap, like I'll do that, but Google Flights won't necessarily show me that. So I usually will look for those itineraries and then, oh, whoa, wait, now there's a, a, another Skip Lag opportunity. Then I'll kind of slip into that. Yeah. Gotcha. No, no, that makes I'm total airlines. sense. I love you. I love you. It's just... Sometimes. Yeah, I, it makes sense sometimes. I, well, coming from Chicago, I got so much status, loyalty, tenure with United. I'd be afraid mm -hmm. to ever upset them yeah. and, and take any any all those all those awesome perks that they give me just for like being loyal to them for mm -hmm. like decades away. I, I don't know what I would do. I actually won't know what my tomorrow would look like if United cut me off today. <laughs> So I won't be doing that with United American. I'm on my way, but United, <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely. Now you had mentioned your UR points, which means you do have a chase card. Now, mm -hmm. one of my channel members, Sledge, I don't know if he's in here just yet. I can't see who is actually in here on the, on this particular screen, but this dude's OG triple OG when it comes to credit card game, like over 40 active open and active credit cards as of right now that's and, that's i think the most i've heard i'm not gonna lie uh one of the questions that he hit me with this morning was ask him ask john how many credit cards does he have and to answer that i've got nine right now okay Isn't that nine and it's pretty eclectic like it's not all just travel i've got a built i've got uh apple card i've got uh the work card of course uh and then yeah marriott united um chase freedom i'm missing a few for sure and then you know some some are in the graveyard right now and i'm coming up on my my uh sapphire renew i'm gonna see if i can get a retention offer but other than that i still haven't dipped my toe into the amex world which i think i, I keep hearing flutters of, of the benefits and want to give that a go at some point so if Chase doesn't bend this time, I might I might give it a go. All right. I'm going to come back to Amex. Yeah. Back to Chase real quick. So you said Sapphire. Hot take in this community. Sapphire preferred or Sapphire reserved? I'm reserved. I'm reserved. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, to give you the travel credit, it just goes down so quickly. And I, I mean, I travel enough that I'm using the perks. So 100%. Nope. I'm right there with you. I'm also a reserve card holder as well. Now, go, going back to Amex, you had mentioned that you don't um, have any Amex cards yet. Mm -hmm. um, and don't worry, I, I'm going to come back to this in a second because I just started with Amex cards like a year or so ago. I only okay. have I only have one myself. Um, but it sounds like you're pretty heavy on the Chase UR points. And then if it's not a Chase UR point, it's more like, like you had said, Marriott, like a branded type of uh, travel word currency then, correct? Yeah, that's right. And then because you said Marriott, I'm assuming that you're a Marriott person or are you a Hyatt or Hilton yeah, person? Yeah. There's another hot take. Marriott slash Hyatt, you know, like I'll <laughs> get like the Hyatt, like discover or explore somehow during the, the promos of matching or or something like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, Hyatt, as you know, like great with point value. Like I'm not going to go to Marriott if there's like a Hyatt that I can really cash out on. But yeah, uh, yeah the offerings for Marriott are just... It just is it's a flu, it's a, pro, a plethora of options. And so I'll end yeah. up just like, you know, hitting one of the brands, a courtyard or something, something small. Nope, makes total sense to me. Yeah. Now, I only ask that because there is definitely a three way war happening between the Hyatt, the Marriott, and the Hilton communities. As I mentioned, one of our channel members um, that's currently in her Cesar is all about Hilton. 
And sorry, say sorry. I'm still not a Hilton fanboy. I just I just can't do it. But I the only reason why I asked that is because we had already had so much stuff in common between the cards, the Chicago, and everything else. Mm -hmm. Is that I don't have any hotel cards, and it was always a hot take for people to be like, "How are you? One, how are you a travel enthusiast without hotel cards? And two, how are you a YouTube creator about travel and you don't have any hotel cards?" Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I like to do. Uh, is I use my United miles because it's so easy for me to get United miles through some mm -hmm. of my personal like hacks and things like that thing that I like to call point stacking where I can take uh, use one reward from one card, mix that with a shopping portal or a grocery card and things like that. So I can turn every single transaction into instead of like one point per dollar, one mile per dollar to like eight, 10, 15 or anything like that. Yeah. So I never needed the hotel card because I could just book hotels with my United miles. So mm -hmm. very similar to what you're saying, I care more about the geographical location of where I'm staying more than anything else first. So that's my first thought when I'm picking a hotel. Mm -hmm. So like you said, if you went to Haneda or Tokyo or anything like that, if I want to stay in this particular region, actually, South Korea, Seoul, one of my new favorite places in this world. I'm actually going there in another couple of weeks um, in the Gangnam district. Mm -hmm. I want to stay right there in the middle of Coex in the Gangnam district. But if I was stuck with, I got to use my Hilton points or my Marriott points, I couldn't do that. Whereas I can just book with United Miles and stay my favorite intercontinental right there in the, the center of it. Yeah. So do you would you prioritize your hotel with the brand loyalty or the geographical location of where you want to go yeah i it's it's weird i think i was originally geographical location but i now have enough marriott points that i'm like i, I should start using these and so at some yeah. points i've been doing like off city like you got to take a train 20 minutes to to kind of use it if it's one of those yeah. days where i know i'm i'm gonna be in the city or like at an event or something, and I'm just going back to the hotel. Then I'm like, okay, I'll do the commute one one to one. But if you're doing, yeah, Gangnam, Seoul kind of deal, yeah, I, I'd be wanting to walk, take a train, be Center City, get some exactly. views, hospital. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's when I'm like, screw Marriott if they don't have anything. Uh, I'll, I'll use points on this one. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, Cesar. Hilton's not in Gangnam District. <laughs> A, yeah, Hilton, yeah, Hilton it's, it just doesn't line up sometimes with where you want to stay. Yeah. Yep. Also, piggyback on that. Uh, level of luxury. Are you like studio room best value? Or do you want uh, the best luxury as you can get for the price, that is? So it's not like mm -hmm. I'm going to go book a suite, but if I can get a suite in my budget, I'll take a suite. Exactly. I think, like I said earlier, I'm down for a deal. So if I'm in a place, if I'm in, you know, Bali, Indonesia, and you know, there's a there's an opportunity for an Airbnb that's like bungalow style. Yeah, I'll go for it if it's more expensive than me staying in a smaller space. Uh, similarly, like if, when I go to London, I can stay in a hostel for thirty pounds a night, but I'm probably going to do something a bit more mid tier just so that I have like an enjoyable time in London. Um, I think, yeah, usually I'm in that middle ground, but when the opportunity strikes, I'll, I'll go up. I'll go up. Except for Hawaii. Hawaii, I'll go budget. I don't know why. I, I continue to go budget in Hawaii. And unless I'm with like the right set of people, like my family or on an event or something, but sometimes I'll, I'll do like, yeah, a solo trip and hostel it out and hike, surf, eat, scuba, get back and just knock out. I can't do hostel. Can't do it. No. It's gone down drastically. Like the college days, like, especially when I was in Europe. Yeah, hostel everywhere, everywhere. And now I'm like down to like one or two a year. And for me, that's that's very few. It's like for me, it's like when I graduated college, I graduated out of hostel. Like I, I nope, can't do it. Yeah. Can't do it. Yeah. And sometimes the hostels I stay at are just private rooms with a shared bathroom. So it's like, right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember those days. I'm not gonna say I enjoyed them, mm -hmm. but I remember them. Yeah. yeah, just to get the stamp, just to say, hey, where are you going? Three day weekend, where are we going? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep, yep. yep. Oh, let's go ahead and transition to the coup de gras topic, Amazing Race, um, which I am a huge fan of, as well as so uh, I'm watching the current season. One of my favorite things to do is to go, especially that first episode. Mm -hmm. I always find I've been watching my entire life. Amazing Race is, I'm pretty sure, older than me, but anyway. 
I always watch that entry episode number one where they do the introduction to all the teams and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I always seem to be able to peg. Like I could put my last dollar in Vegas. Like, oh, those three teams are going to be like the top three or at least in the top five or whatever like that. So I remember watching your season. Saw, of course, you and your brother, Greg. And I was the very first episode. I'm like, yep, they're going to make top three. You guys definitely had that ambition in your eyes or whatever you want to call it. You could tell from the beginning that y'all came to play. Mm -hmm. The other aspect of it is about halfway through the show, I was like, oh, yeah, these dudes are going to win. If it wasn't going to be you, it was going to be the um, the other only other team that I had pegged was the red team. Unfortunately, I don't remember their name, but yeah, Rob and Corey. Yeah, Rob and Corey. Yeah, the 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 deaf father, you know, mm -hmm. um, the deaf father. OK. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm oh, sure. Oh, <laughs> At Google? <laughs> On Google? Nice, nice. <laughs> so, if you know ASL, you know what we just had, we know what we just said to each other. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, um, that was my team number two. And of course, both of y'all made it into the top three. But I really, really, really enjoyed watching that. But before I get into my next Amazing Grace question, can I just say, out of all the shows that I've ever seen, and I've seen, like I said, I've seen every single season at this point, you and your brother ran probably one of the smartest, most honest driven, like you guys didn't ever screwed anybody over when people are like asking for help. If you could help, you knew the answer, you did help. Mm -hmm. But you, you never like, you know, side or sidelined or blindsided anyone by like, oh yeah, come help us. And then you kind of like screw them over or anything like that. So first off, yo, thank you for running probably one of the most honest races I've ever seen in the show. But at the same time, one of the absolute smartest races I've ever seen in the show. You guys did your research before you went on and you could tell. But with that, before I get into another go deeper into that what actually inspired you and your brother to even audition for the amazing race mm -hmm. well i'll say my i guess now fiance I just got engaged this previous weekend um congrats thank you. thank you yeah well at the time she was my girlfriend at the time she loved reality tv she still does but wanted me to watch and so um she got me on bachelor survivor big brother and amazing race and i think the first season i watched was 32 32 or 33 and like slowly kind of dipped my feet into it gregory hadn't watched a season yet uh we were at our grandparents 75th wedding anniversary in south carolina just chilling for a few days and we were trying to do this exact thing how do we travel for free we're looking at points looking at credit cards we're like learning how to play poker <laughs> you know all this stuff we're just like let's do a session here and one of our wild ideas was to apply for the amazing race and you know just get a free trip get some money out of it thought it'd be pretty ideal so we put together a real quick and dirty two minute video and submitted it and just completely forgot about it. Like just submitted it and just was like, well, that was a fun exercise. But <laughs> four months later, we just happened to be in Canada on a snowboarding trip, just the two of us for like a week and a half. The second day we're there, I get a call from LA and they're like, hey, we saw your video. You know, we'd like to do some more follow up here. Um, and then immediately Greg and I dropped the snowboarding act and just like watched a ton of episodes of the amazing race. So we went back into the archives, we're watching episodes, we're writing notes, we're seeing what people are packing. We're seeing um, like what like little strategies they're taking. And I'm a product manager. So I was like PMing the heck out of it. I had a spreadsheet, <laughs> uh, things we were wanting to pack with like the ounce amount on every single one. And really just like making sure that, yeah, we were just pretty systematic about it. But I mean, literally that call is just the first step. Like, I, I was afraid that we'd get that call, submit like our paper application and then never hear back because I was seeing on Reddit that that's what happens. Uh, thankfully, they did follow up. And then it was just like a slew of interviews after interviews after interviews. You do an IQ test. You, they do a background check on you. They were pulling up tweets from like 2016 when I was tweeting about Trump, just saying like in anger. They're like, what do you mean by this tweet? And I'm just like, I'm angry, what are you talking about? And, and so uh, they're very thorough because, yeah, they're investing a lot in you. They're they're yeah. be on TV, uh, keep your cool under certain situations, but also be entertaining enough that 
you're not keeping your cool too much. You, they want to have people who, you know, are able to be good storytellers and, and have emotion. Yeah. People can invest in you. So uh, I think a lot of our job when we were doing these interviews were just to like have really good relationship, um, not necessarily healthy, not and all, uh, just just strong, a strong relationship. Um, and I think we were able to do that. Yeah. And, and then when we flew out to LA for our final interview, um, we found out three weeks before the show started that we were going to be on it. So then it was like, okay, let's, let's really, let's really dial down on everything now. So you guys did your audition tape, submitted the audition tape and the paperwork. And it was basically like, if it happens, it happens. You kind of forgot about it. And then all of a sudden it happened. Yeah, all of a sudden it happened. And it's different for different people. Like some people are recruited, you know, Amazing Race hears of a good story or duo and it says, hey, would you be interested in auditioning? Other people, yeah, have been watching the race since season one and have been applying year after year after year. And there's one year where they're like, we need this mother-son team. Like, we're looking for that. That would really fit. And so I've heard of teams who have been on retainer. They've gotten to like almost the last, uh, they have gotten to the last step and been rejected but they're like we love you so much we'll let you know what happens next season you'll be you know fast tracked into that and maybe even build a cast that helps support that team to be on um the other thing is like there are teams who like are selected and don't end up being able to go like something else happens or pops up so there are people on retainer on backup who like might get pulled last second there was one team on my season victor and jocelyn who were originally on the season before mine and then got waitlisted just like that and ended up being pushed to my season. And good thing they did because my season definitely got more travel than the season before that was shot. So it happens. Wow. I, I'm not going to go too deep into the questions of the show. I don't know how much you can actually answer or anything like that. But the timeline of the show, of course, as a viewer, I get 90 minutes a week, which... Mm -hmm stretches out of maybe over eight weeks maybe three months or so yep. how long is the actual race itself the actual race itself is a little over a month and with that time i'm including the time the like week we spend over a week that we spend in la cooped up in a hotel room uh just doing all of these like onboarding things so uh, the, the fun thing is uh, a lot of people ask like so like what did you do when you were not racing did you watch tv did you like play games on your phone? They take my phone the, the minute I land in LA, they take my wallet, they take like wow. anything that's like going to distract that keeps you plugged in. But you do have your backpack of all of the stuff that you're going to carry that's going to support you throughout your month um, on the job. So uh, you spend a week yeah, in the hotel and you do uh, safety checks, you do um, diversity, ex equity and inclusion training, you go through uh, practice challenges. So you know like how to rip a clue and like what it's like to be on camera they they really get you ready that way and then there's just one day you don't know when but there's just one day they're like it's tomorrow morning it, it was like 4 p.m and then the creator of the show comes in and it's like it's happening tomorrow morning and, and you just get ready you take all of your photos like for the um for like the intro cards and all of the pre-interviews so you, you get all this media stuff ready too but the minute the minute you get to that starting line and phil the host says the world is waiting travel safe, go, it is hands off. They do not touch you. They let you to go wherever you need to. And then that's where the real month starts. And so um, when you're on a leg, the camera, they're, they're just following you. Like I've heard plenty of stories of people going to the wrong country. Like in the camera guys, just like getting in the cab, getting in the train. Um, but then when you check in for the mat, then you go back to that hotel room. You're not allowed to leave. You're not allowed to explore the country, unfortunately. So all the time you see me on the race is, the time that I'm outside of a hotel room. Otherwise I'm in there sleeping with Gregory. Wow. Okay. That's way more hectic than we get to see on my side of the TV screen. Yeah. <laughs> now you have mentioned a whole lot right there. One, all the prep and planning, the analytics, the PMing that you had mentioned to prepare mm -hmm. for the race. Um, what, and of course you and I, we had just had a small conversation in ASL. So w my next question is what type of life experiences, travel experiences actually gave you a benefit when you guys mm. were on the race? Like how many languages do you know, John? <laughs> <laughs> ASL is, is real peripheral. I did take Japanese <laughs> in, in high school and, you know, Gregory took French and we're both like, please take us to either of these countries. We've got it in the bag. Um, 
I remember yeah. that challenge, the French yeah, challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think um, in, in terms of just like getting ready for the show, it, things that I couldn't study for within like a few weeks before were definitely like comf being comfortable around airports and itineraries and knowing how to switch and where to switch. I had one team, unfortunately, we got, Greg and I got to an airport first and had our, our time slot for an earlier flight. And these other teams that were behind us were late and were on a later flight. Um, the first team to get there, who was on the later flight, we're like, ah, okay, we'll come back to our gate a little later. We'll get some food. All the other teams were like, oh, standby exists. I'm going to get on standby on Gregory and John's flight and, and try to get on their earlier flight. And this other team comes back with their pretzels or schnitzels or whatever. And yeah, they're like, wait, well, how'd you guys go on this flight? So they didn't even know that. <laughs> so I think it's it's more particular stuff like that that, 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 that really helps, it's especially like when you're on the ground, like getting around with navigation is – Critical. I continue to say, like Gregory and I got to where we were mostly because we were just good navigators. And I was, I was mostly the navigator. I'm in the back. You have him driving six shift, doing the good work. But um, for me, just being comfortable with uh, getting someone's phone, writing down the stuff from Google Maps because we don't have a phone. We have to literally engage with someone, ask them to give us directions. We write down the directions, and then from there, we're in the car. We can drive for three hours at a time without a phone, needing to know every exit how many kilometers we're going there's this slip road and then this uh off like shoot of a roundabout so it's just keeping all of those details really uh organized because that will trip teams up like that the worst thing is with these written notes as soon as you veer off the path you don't know where you are there is zero recalculating recalculating it's just like you're, you're lost and you got to get back out the car and find someone and sometimes there's no one to ask so it's tough I can only imagine that being a lot worse than not reading the clue. I think that's my biggest pet peeve of watching the show. It's like, read the freaking clue. <laughs> like, I'll tell you what, though. Those clues are long. Those clues are, are, are a bundle <laughs> of text. I, I think on the show, they'll just say, fly to, like, yeah, fly to Paris for your next clue. And and that's all you're really hearing. And, and meet, like, this uh, pastor yeah. at a church for your next clue. But yeah. then from there, there is more information on the clue telling you, what your flight options are like they'll typically let you fly whatever you want but sometimes they'll say you should fly out of this airport and arrive at this airport doesn't matter how what what you do but you have to do that um they'll talk about like the type of car that you should take to get there or back they'll tell you how much money you have so um that's just getting around but when you're at a challenge that's when you're really your your senses are elevated you're like really just trying to get into the action you see other teams on the challenge you get anxious you're like i just need to really like catch up to these teams and there are instructions, like if there's something where you're supposed to, when our season, yeah, like bring these plates out to um, to guests at a restaurant, like there will be specific instructions on how you're supposed to interact. This person is not supposed to leave the kitchen. This person can leave the kitchen. And when they do, they have to put them in a certain order and they have to say check. And only when they say check is when they're it's an official try. So it's all this stuff that will get people kind of picked up and uh, sometimes yeah, it will really screw you over. For Gregory and I, our biggest thing was like, we went to the wrong temple at some point in Thailand. Um, was it Thailand? Yeah. It was like, go to this uh, like Watsulalanam temple in Salaya. And we just like completely forgot about this in Salaya. We went to a temple of the exact same name that was an hour away. And we were like looking around this temple, like where the heck is this clue box? And as soon as I'm like, is this the right temple? Camera comes up. Camera's like trying to get my shot. And I'm like, <laughs> read the clue. Fudge, you're in the wrong spot. So, yeah, it happens to the best of us. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. No, like I said, it's my biggest pet peeve. But obviously, I'm an observer. So I don't know what it's really like to be in those shoes. But no, you explained that very well. Maybe I'll be nicer to my TV next time. <laughs> I see that. But um, before I got two more questions and then I want to jump into some of the comments that people are leaving so that they can ask you some of their questions as well. But I think the first of my two of my two final questions about the show itself would be take us back to that moment and share with us what it's like to jump on that last red mat and win the amazing race. <laughs> it, it was like, out of body in the way that like I was just imagining watching it on TV in a way. I, I think it was like I, I feel like I was thinking of myself watching The Amazing Race, you know, however many episodes, however many seasons the past few months, and then putting myself into the TV of these people I had seen celebrating and just felt really bizarre to like just have the privilege to be in that position. When Gregory and I got there, 
we saw a car that was like the same model car that the three teams were using that leg. And so I told Gregory, like, another team's here. We got second. It's okay. That's okay. And, you know, I'm running up thinking we got second for sure. That's okay. Um, and when we see – the best thing is when I was turning the corner, I could see some of the other teams, and they just started freaking out. And that's the first moment I knew, like, oh, wow, this is actually first. Um, and I, I gave a lot of physical excitement. It was just so <laughs> – uh, it was it was just amazing, but I remember like tripping. I did some weird spin at the end. Like I, I was just goofing around, and at some point, I think Phil said, "Like this is the most excited I've ever seen anyone yep. on the mat." <laughs> I was like, yep. "Yeah, you should be." Like, <laughs> what the heck? Because not only are you winning like the money and the title, but also you just invested a lot of time. And yeah. Stress. Like I started growing my first like gray hairs on this race because it was just like a lot of stress. Even if you were in a good position, just like you didn't want to mess up and. It was just really rewarding to have that payoff um, and do it with Gregory, who, like, yeah, has just been alongside me my whole life. So uh, I, it's weird to have not been able to share that with him if I'd done it with someone else. Yeah. I've always asked myself if I were to do The Amazing Grace with anyone, um, yeah, would do? I would do it with my brother, my oldest of my two brothers. Yeah. Um, he He's the one that inspired me to, well, one, pushed me on the study level the intelligence level always found a new way to like teach me something new, whether it be chemistry, pop culture, <laughs> those types of things. Uh, so much so I actually named my son after my oldest brother. So like oh. if I could do it with anyone and my wife is probably watching, it would be my oldest brother. <laughs> but I, I, I say that because I always say I've watched enough of the amazing races to realize like couples, or 50 50 at <laughs> on the race like it the race will, will end a relationship yeah especially if you're not married the race will end a relationship um now we're not recently engaged or recently married it's been a, a little bit over a couple of years now but yeah i'm like i'm pretty sure we would survive it but we would not be the same on the other side of her and i would be on the amazing grace together we can barely fly across the country without <laughs> <laughs> an instance <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. i hear you i hear you and i think i that was my greatest fear like the, they'll ask you that during the interview process like what what's your greatest fear going on the race and as corny as it is i would just be telling them like the honest truth that just like i don't want to have a bad relationship with my brother on tv like i don't want my parents yep. to see that i don't want the world to see that yeah um, not that we've had that before but just like this is another element of stress in a new environment and i think the thing that helped was just like a lot of trust that and then not all teams have this, but for me, it was like, I have a lot of trust in him that he's going to do the best he can. And like a lot of times if he's doing the best he can, he does not able to get it. I likely wasn't able to get it. So I think we were both knowing where the other was coming from. Um, so there was a lot of forgiveness in that way. Yeah. The biggest thing that we disagreed with was how to strategize with other teams. I think he had more of this, let's like play our own game and like let other teams either fight for themselves. I was a bit more, let's help where we can if we know that we have an advantage and maybe that'll help us later on. I think that's where we had the biggest disagreements, but um, ended up working out, obviously. Obviously it did, yeah. Now, final question, this one's an easy one. If they were to do another all-star show, would you do it again? <laughs> it, it's funny, last night I got dinner with uh, Derek and Claire who won the season before me. Uh, mm -hmm. season for. And Derek was telling me, because he actually gave, um, him and Claire gave the clue, the first clue on our season in LA. Mm -hmm. um, but for that call, the producers called, texted him and Claire was like, hey, can you hop on a call? We just got to ask you something real quick. And he's like, oh shoot, they're going to ask us to like do another season. And they got on the call and the producer's like, you want to win another million dollars? And he's <laughs> freaking out. He's like, drop to the floor. He blacks out for the rest of the call. Doesn't know that they're only asking him to hand out a clue on this next season. Um, but all this to say, that's exactly how I would have reacted. And I think a lot of previous winners are pretty hungry to like, not only get back in the game, but also see how we'd fare against the other winners. Because really you are as good as your competitors. And you yeah. have um super easy season but that might be because your competitors are good or maybe you came in second because they just happen to be the best team in history in front of you so um i'd be so down i'd be uh really excited to compete against some of the best and oh yeah would... like the fun stoppable team yeah Derek yeah and claire 
Uh-huh. The Cowboys. Oh, I'd love Cowboys, to see y'all. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to see y'all go head to head with like yeah, some of those teams. I think that'd yeah. be a lot of fun. Yeah. And the thing is, Survivor had a winter season for season 40, and we would be three seasons away from that after the season. So, uh, yeah, I got my phone on ring. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, I guess that answers the question. The answer is heck yeah, you would do it again. Answer is heck yeah. <laughs> answer is hell yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm assuming Greg would resonate the same answer he is and i and we kept all the teams were kind of asking us and I, I wonder how you would feel but like we kept asking if you got to the finish line yep and phil was like great you won you lost whatever we're rolling into the next season right now do you do you stay or do you go and it was really polarizing half the teams were like i'd have to take a break like i couldn't say yes to that even if i won I couldn't say yes. I'd have to take a break. And some people were like, "Yeah, just keep it going. Like, I'm ready. Like, I already have. I'm already packed." And Gregory yep. and I were in different places there. He was like, "I think I need a break." I was like, "I would do this forever," uh, but I think he's at a place now where he he would get back into it. He misses. Yeah. It. I this. No, I'd be there for it. I I would be sitting there with my. Well, I'm a cookie fiend. I'm not a popcorn fiend, but I'll be sitting there with my cookies in hand watching the All Star Show. Hundred <laughs> percent. I just have to go to Japan and like the first ASL country, and then I'm I'm good. <laughs> right. I, I'm surprised they don't do more of that. Like go to Martha's Vineyard and just like, mm -hmm. oh, you had to you have to learn this, how to sign this, like whatever poem, the story, whatever. And right. ASL. I'm like, mm -hmm. if I were ever on the show, that's the challenge I would dream of. Like, yeah. all right, we're good. We're gonna do the ASL challenge. <laughs> and the thing is, they know it too. When they're yeah. getting you on the show they're like hmm, can we have someone who knows asl because they they've already got an asl challenge in their pocket so um yeah they're they're just excited as you are when you see that stuff they're like so tell us like how do you know asl like what's your journey here and, and that's that's how they that's how they make sure nice okay you're giving me all the tips if i ever want to do an audition video so i, I mean it's really <laughs> literally anything you get out of this conversation yeah, sure, travel, but like apply is the biggest thing. If you're interested, yep. Greg and I really just like, yeah, threw our hat in the ring and ended up working out. Yeah. No, thank you for that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jump over to some comments. Um, let's see. I haven't seen any what anyone has put in here quite yet. So I am going to be going in a, in a chronological order as best as I can. Um, but first we have actually a good friend of us uh, of the community matt clausen says hey congrats on winning the amazing race thank you yeah, yeah. chad channel subscriber here um says you should come to our creator meetup in new orleans <laughs> i'll send you the details if you want to do it the deets. I, I mean i gotta stick by my word now right i said i wouldn't say no to a new orleans trip yeah yep uh the general the og triple og himself sledge the one that i've mentioned has like 40 plus some of the credit cards uh yeah, yeah he's here so salute he we call him the general because he does the salute so you, whenever you say that you got to you got to do the salute you gotta you right. gotta respect the general uh he's also a channel member as well uh matt clausen comes back in with another question so what is your favorite airport lounge hmm you know what i i really did like this um I forget the name of Diablo Lounge in Bogota. It's like a huge lounge, multiple bars, like, you know, kid center, meeting rooms, really nice. But honestly, I went to the um, to the Turkish Airlines one in Istanbul pretty recently, and they invested pretty heavily in that. It's not like the best. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. It's spacious. It's You can see the airport. Um, good food. Very good food. A little busy though. That's that's what I had down for it. They had um, a locker for your luggage though, which was nice. I just like put my luggage in a locker for free and was able to roam from the airport, roam that. So yeah, Turkish. I have I have not been to Istanbul, but I hear one. I know it's culturally historically great, of course, mm -hmm. but I also hear it is one of the best luxury slash value trips you can actually take. So it's like full of high value luxury but to the US dollar, a very low cost. Yeah. Would you agree with that statement? I would agree with that statement. I would. I okay. Would. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if once my son can walk a mile and a half without a stroller, <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the way. The only reason why we're not going to Venice, water. So <laughs> yeah, not really baby friendly. Yeah. Oh, 
what's what do we got next so john mr john r has become a channel member while we, we have been talking so thank you so much john and and the also this john so both of you johns thank you so much uh r squared travel richard this is a really fun guy if you have not seen his youtube channel john i recommend you go do it especially because you said you had the built card i guarantee you learned something about the built card or how to use it that you did not know before that's going to equal total value that you can use um great in any way shape or form he knows the real. built card inside and out he's probably one of like the built card he probably works for built and not telling us like that's how, <laughs> that's that's how deep he is uh cesar says salute that means the general entered the building but uh, let's see oh richard he actually had another question so just perked up as i heard africa actually richard lived in africa or he travels there quite regularly keep me honest here rich but asked if you did any safaris i sure did i did two i did one in uh Chobe in botswana which is great and lots of elephants hella elephants there was like one large source of water so it was easy to do like a, a cruise or um four by four ride to see a lot of the animals but then i went to um south africa to kruger national park and did a safari there and it was just glorious i spent three days there um, there was the space that we stayed in was in the park and animals were freely walking by. I'd wake up in the morning and see elephant dung outside my door, meaning one pass overnight. And the hyena <laughs> came in. Like, I just felt really in it. And then also just saw like some really great wildlife, rhinos, zebras, uh, yeah, hyenas. The last, like one of the few last white lions, apparently there were only like 12 of them left and, um, got to see one in the wild, which was neat. So nice. yeah, I, my, yeah, I, my head is still in the bush. That is for sure. Like. I still have dreams about that, even though it was like two weeks ago. Loved it. Nice. Yeah, I think Rich, once again, Rich, keep me honest, drop something in there. She's still in the in the uh, live. I think he spent a good chunk of time in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, so, yeah, he might have another question around that. Have you ever been to Kenya yourself? I'm a Not yet, but actually planning a trip in September to Kenya. So Gotcha. OK. We'll have to make some videos in the meantime. I've never been there, but it's, it's definitely on my list as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, the doc is in the building. Awesome. Welcome, doc. Let's see. Let's see. We... John, nine cards. That's getting up to legit level. I, I, I kind of agree with that statement. Like a lot of us on the low end have about nine or 10 cards. So mm. you're not too far off from the rest of us. Yeah, so, yeah. I think the thing I, I can do my churning a bit more efficiently, like really keep it like a tight, like year to have the card and then move on. But um, sometimes I get lazy or attached, just emotionally attached. Sometimes that's where I'm at with United. I got my, I got my sign on bonus. I got my vouchers for the lounge and now I just sign up for another year. Why I'm still using my, my chase to pay for United flight. So I don't know. Yeah. But see that United Explorer card, I'm not going to lie. It's one of my very first travel cards. And you're right. It's $95. You get the two United Club passes. But at the beginning of the rapid fire, you said you would choose business over economy if you could anyway. Yeah. So you end up getting like the United Club, depending on like if it's a six hour flight or more, you'll get your United Club for free mm -hmm. or you have status with them or loyalty, like I said, mentioned with tenure. But if you're like business class, you got Polaris, Polaris Lounge and or the United Club for free right. anyway. People underestimate all the extra value United gives you, the just exacerbated value just by holding that card, hmm. even if you're not using it. I, I don't use it to buy anything. Yeah. I, I can't tell you the last time I swiped or used it to pay online <laughs> for absolutely anything. But when I fly, free Wi-Fi or discounted food, discounted Wi-Fi, uh, what else? All the free check bags, the priority board and access, all that stuff people don't take into consideration so no yeah. once again resonate with you don't knock the united explorer card it is an incredibly valuable card for 95 dollars a year and you already get your money back because united club passes if you want to buy a day pass was almost 60 dollars anyways 59 mm -hmm. That's yeah true. so it's a, you're already getting 118 dollars for your night yeah. i digress i digress <laughs> anyway i'm glad that you know you had at least you and i are on the same page mm -hmm. yep so once again, told you, Sledge, General. Everyone knows when he's in the building. This is OG, triple OG, and we appreciate you. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, also, another channel member, Darius Jamal, is in the building as well. Appreciate you, Darius. Uh, appreciate you being here. And he also says, don't sleep on Marriott hotels. So, yeah. I mean, sleep on Marriott hotels, but don't sleep on Marriott hotels. Literally sleep there. <laughs> yeah. And then the general follows up with, that's why he has three hotel cars so he can stay wherever he wants. So, yeah, that takes away the geographical limitations that that I have. Um, but yeah, I get it. Whichever. Yep. All right. Let me see if I can find another question in here before we end uh, the stream. We're about an hour right now ish. Uh, uh, Michael of Wong Way Travels. Didn't Europe have an issue with hostels and, uh, I guess, bed bug problems last year? Mm -hmm. There's always bed bug problems. Have you ever stayed in a hotel or found bed bugs in your hotel room? No, it's one of my greatest fears. And yeah, yep. Paris definitely was was yep. hurting with this the other time, but um, I haven't seen it yet. And I don't know how I'd react. I'm not a germaphobe, but that would give me the heebie-jeebies. I'd, I'd have to emotionally recover from that for quite some time. Yep. Yeah. The first thing I do every time I walk into a hotel room is check for bed bugs. Mm -hmm. The literal first thing that I do before I do anything wow. else. As I go pull up those sheets and check for bed bugs. That's not great. lying. I got to that, that's I got to put that into my repertoire. Yeah. Yeah, I don't check the whole, the remote. I don't like turn on the light. I go straight to the bed and check for bed bugs every single time. That is mm -hmm. I'm right there with you. That's one of my biggest fears. Yeah. Um not too many actually. We don't have any other questions left. If anyone has any other question, drop it now before we let John go back on with his day, but Richard uh, R squared um, has responded. He said that he couldn't do it the way that you did. And he also that he has a, a trusted Dalmatian Whoa. that he has to travel with. So our dogs <laughs> allowed on the, I guess the safari or the uh, African excursion that you had mentioned. Mm, I didn't see any. It was pretty intimate, but I feel like it'd be tough. Not Nothing against your dog, but I'm sure that the other animals would, would kind of peak up because I think they're used to the smell of humans is from is what I was getting. Even we get right up to a lion. The lion would wake up from nap, see us, and just go right back down. But as soon as like a uh, hyena started coming up, like just completely alert. So I feel like a dog would skew a little bit with, with their senses. But I mean, the Dalmatian, that'd be mad cute to carry around for, for any kind of travel. Obviously. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to take a dog on a safari. I'm not taking my dog on a safari. <laughs> nah. Just in case worst case scenario becomes the worst case scenario. But yeah. hey, I'm, I'm, obviously they have, there has to be some type of either a disclaimer or something. I'm yeah. pretty sure. No, no not my problem. Yeah. Um, we'll figure it out. That is the excursions problem. <laughs> other than that, we don't have any other questions, man. So, Let's go ahead and end it there. We've been on for just about a whole hour. So that is absolutely awesome. Uh, I don't know if I can thank you anymore. This has been an incredibly, 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 incredibly fun conversation. Getting to know you even more. Talking about one of my absolute favorite shows. Seeing such a genuine, just genuine guy and his brother absolutely win it. I can't be any more ecstatic or happy about that. And we have an opportunity potential opportunity to see them again if they're invited back for all-star show so yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen the show um you can also see some of my reactions greg and i have a youtube channel greg and john is the name of it um yeah and you can follow me on instagram i'm at, i think frank lify f-r-a-n-k-l-i-f-y I don't have that ready for a banner but if you send it to me after we're done i'll put it oh, in the name. Uh, comments and in the description so we can definitely go find you so you have a youtube channel and you have an instagram correct yep yep we'll put it in there so that, that you know anyone can come find you so but other than that anything else for us or the community in here john no that's great i, I got a i got a lot of youtube content to watch i got some new accounts to add so looking forward to that absolutely and i'm sure they will all 100 appreciate it including myself but uh other than that I'll go ahead and let you go. We'll cut this off for now. And once again, thanks again, dude. It was, yeah, this was a great conversation. Yeah, awesome channel.